Coming up today, we're harvesting Jerusalem artichokes with my Sarah niece. We're going to see what we have and some of the options you have when harvesting and how much you should harvest. And we'll take a look at some of the reasons why you might want to cover your garden beds with leaves. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by for all your non-GMO organic and heirloom vegetable flowers and herb seeds visit dollarseed.com Sioux Growing Supply located in Wausau Wisconsin focusing on certified leaf compost an excellent amendment for poor soil retains moisture and adds nutrients which equals less water available in labor saver pre-filled trays and pots, bag and bulk. Visit SueCompost.com. Organic fertilizer for the health conscious organic home gardener. Family owned and operated. Visit WGardens.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind and soil hose filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil, conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew. Visit ManureTea.com. No measuring, no thinking. Stamp it, plant it, stop plotting, start planting. GardenStamp.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We're in the large garden day and it's time to harvest our artichokes. I'm here with my niece, Sarah, and we're going to dig the artichokes. Artichokes are a relation to the sunflower and the potato, less starchy and good for diabetics. So what we've done here, you can harvest artichokes at any point after the flowers uh, come off the top. They're, they have little like daisy type flowers. And these have died back because we had a couple of frosts. So we're going to go ahead and dig out some of these. Now, they don't store very long, so you only want to have enough for about a week. You can make a many different uh, dishes with them. Uh, you can make mashed Jerusalem artichokes. You can also grind them up and make like hash browns out of them as well if you extract a lot of the water out like you would a potato. So what we're going to use here, Sarah, is we're going to use a pitchfork. You want to come over here. This is too heavy. Yeah, we'll get it with the fork here. Stand over here. Okay. How about you help me? How about you help me with the pitchfork? All right. So we've got carrots intermingled in this as well. Here, Sarah. You want to? Yeah. You want to pull it back? Yeah. All right. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Pull it back. Oh, we got carrots. There's a carrot there. Here, ready? Let's pull this out here. Ready? Help me pull this out. All right. That's a. Now this row here wasn't supposed to be anything. I'd sifted the soil, and we were going to plant carrots, and we did plant carrots, but there were obviously some roots in the bottom here. That's what an artichoke looks like. That's a baby artichoke, or sunchoke, uh, Jerusalem artichoke sunchoke. So let's see what else. You want to see what else we got on the ground here? Oh, look at that another artichoke. Let's, let's in the garden. Oh, look what we got here. Look at that. Want to put that in the tub there? There you go. All right. Got a baby carrot you can put in the tub. So no matter what you do, you're always going to have, oh, look at that one. You're always going to have artichokes left in your garden. So wherever you plant them, whether it's in a container like we have in the front yard garden or here, they're never going to plant anything else because these are perennial. They continue to come back no matter how well you thin out. Yeah, here, you want to put that in there? Uh, no matter how much you try to thin these out, any particle of root will start another plant. There you go. There's some nice sized ones there. So we're going to... So we're going to harvest the rest of these and we'll see what we end up with at least this row. You can leave these in the ground. You can buy these from organic grocery stores. Plant them now in the fall or you can wait till the spring. You can divide them up with, with like a potato, like a traditional potato with the eyes and you can plant them spacing them 18 to 24 inches because as you can see they're going to need every bit of it. So we're going to go ahead and finish digging the rest of these up Sarah. Let's see what else we can find. That can... All right let's see what else we got here. All right so I'm going to harvest, continue to harvest uh, as much as I think 
uh, that we can use in a week as well as give away to some friends and, and family. Now the, the thing with the artichokes like I spoke earlier about, Sarah's went on her way. She's decided she's had enough fun digging artichokes up for the day. Uh, you want to, again, they're not going to store long. Man, they were big. They're not going to store long in um, just out like this. Now different people will tell you if you're going to store them over winter type of situation, take a five gallon bucket, put about two or three inches of soil in it, layer these in soil on top so it, it mimics that these are in the ground, put them in a cool place like a, a garage, uh, unheated garage or an unheated basement uh, where it's dark and that will uh, slow down the the decomposing process and they'll keep longer. Now that's something that uh, we have tried with, uh, well we didn't really store them in the basement so that was part of the issue. But they did keep longer when mimicked in that scenario. You can keep them in an airtight bag in your refrigerator for about a week before they really start going bad. Again, you don't have to cook these. That's the neat thing about them. There's wild Jerusalem artichokes as well as cultivated. And if you don't know what you're looking for, you could be on a property of a homestead and have a lot of these growing and you just need to look, you know, dig them up and see what you have. If it mimics what a Jerusalem artichoke looks like and you can find those images online on any search engine. So if you would like to grow Jerusalem artichokes, best to, you know, most seed companies will provide the tubers in the spring. And again, you never have to plant these again. These are a perennial, they'll keep coming back. Uh, honestly, from that row back there, that, that one, all that we've never harvested. We've just had so much over the last two years. That's just natural regrowing of the tubers that were in the ground for the previous, uh, from last year and the year before that. We've just never made it over that far to harvest them. So they'll keep coming back. And from what I thought would be, they would come back smaller and smaller, but from my investigation of digging around here, they're just coming back bigger and bigger. So Jerusalem artichokes, uh, you can grow them in a container as well as ground. Less starchy, good for you. You don't have to cook them. Also, you can make some interesting dishes with them. There's no better resource to use in your garden than a free resource, and that's leaves. There's so many great benefits that leaves can do for your garden. One being we've put raised or we put fences around certain raised berms or makeshift raised beds based on what your terminology of a raised berm is. Raised berm, permanent growth space, and then distinct walk paths so there's no compression from walking on it. We put these over certain areas where we've seen a great decrease in nutrients in the soil, and this will increase the nutrients, even though it won't totally break down, it will greatly help it. Two, even if you don't do this, and you have the opportunity to still get and gather leaves, whether from neighbors or from your own yard, do so and store them in a location to where you can use them in the spring. One being, you can simply take and put them over the bed, work them in the soil, and or you can use them as mulch to greatly reduce the water that's evaporated out of your garden. So don't think of leaves as a nuisance. Think them, as, think as them as a benefit to you and your garden. Um, another thing I would suggest is making sure that you have all of your canning supplies in one space. We keep this basket here. We have our string for when we have to tie like spice sachets. We have some fresh fruit protector. We have um, a little kosher dill pickle mix that we add in sometimes. And then we have our pickling salt, we have lids, we have sure gel, and we have our jar lifter and all that good stuff all together, ready to go. And then when we're done canning, we make sure everything's all clean, put it back in there. It's in one spot so that we're not searching around for everything when it's time to can. So we're gonna put some leaves on the tops of our raised berms. Now we've never done this before for whatever reason we didn't, but we're doing it this year for a couple of different reasons. Now we've mulched with our mulcher, our leaf vacuum. If you don't have one, a lawnmower will do fine. Or you can just simply put leaves on whatever bed that you're growing or you're, you, you plant in, whether it's just a traditional ground garden or raised berms like we have or raised beds. It's going to do a couple of things here. Leaves have such a dense amount of natural nutrients that the tree has brought up from the ground that as it breaks down, it releases all of that into the soil. So 
we've got large beds here and here of compost of yard scraps of leaves because we found that those two beds are kale bed as well as our green bean cabbage bed was lacking a lot of nutrients. So that's why those beds are built up like they are with a cage around. The rest of the beds, we're just going to put about a three to six inch layer. This is where our celery was of leaves. Now, by the time spring comes around, the leaves, even though it's a carbon base, it's not gonna break down as quickly as if it was 50-50 nitrogen versus browns or greens versus browns it will still reduce in size by about 50%. Then we will come in in the spring and just flip this soil over and incorporating the leaves into the, into the, in the, in the native soil. The reason why from a non, for, I'm not a scientist, but this is what I'm thinking. In addition to doing this will help the soil because it will insulate the soil a little bit more than if it was just open to the natural elements which will bring worms into the areas where there's a lot of leaves. Worms can sense warmth in the soil, so they're gonna congregate in those areas, feeding on the organic material, as well as releasing worm castings, which will help the soil in its native state, and it'll build a lot of nutrients in the soil. As well as for no other reason, we're doing this so it can simply add more organic material to the beds, which in turn will help the vegetables that we plant in these beds and throughout the rest of the garden grow much better next year. Thanks for watching. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.